Yo! Hello to you all my beautiful people and right here, right now, for one lifetime only, I'm starting yet another show. But hey, didn't I already explain this in a video a couple of weeks ago? Hmm, different shows. And these four shows at the moment are Ked Icarus, Top 10 Lists, Current Quickies, Today's Special. And I'm also starting a new show called Caddy's Retrospectives and slightly changing Current Quickies in the future because I'm an indecisive whore face. But yeah, this new show, there's no point explaining anything about it. It's pretty self-explanatory. So hopefully it all goes well as we debut Caddy's Retrospectives! Where I explore the first three of a certain game franchise and I give a serious and in-depth analysis of them. And also I'm going to be sharing some of my personal experiences and deciding whether or not they hold up today. And this edition of Ganis Retrospectives is all about one of my most favourite game series. This is Crash Bandicoot. I guess we should start at number one. No, cr crash, crash Bandicoot 1. Yes. So the year is 1996, and your bastard sister has been born earlier that year. You, yourself, are two years old and can't even shit properly on bodily command, let alone play a video game system. But still, your mind is conscious over the fact that a legendary figure is being modelled by some weird company called Naughty Dog. A figure, that of which, is none other than an anthropomorphic bandicoot. Can't, can't go wrong. Insta classic. Okay, well I've actually already spoken about this dude over here in my Crash Bash review. Let's have a look, shall we? It was about this thing created by this guy who escaped from this guy because this guy is evil and wants to steal this thing's girlfriend and enslave humanity. And so, by traversing three islands composing of multiple types of level design and boss battles, our beloved Bandicoot must save the world and stop the evil Cortex. The player could move Crash in eight different directions and collect a hundred Wampa Fruits for an extra life, spin to destroy boxes and get rid of those pesky enemies, and for the health system you can find a witch doctor mask known as Aku Aku scattered through all the levels. And as you'd expect, you find one to have one hit before dying, two to have two hits before dying, and three can make you go invincible for a brief moment in time. Fun fact, did you know that Crash's original conception was a character called Willy Wombat? <laughs> yep, that's pretty much all there is to it. Simplistic idea, gameplay, goals and controls. All backed up by whatever the fuck this was. This was obviously a guaranteed triumph before the game even began production. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot was a game truly made by devoted platform gamers for devoted platform gamers, taking every quintessential part of previous 2D platformers and flipping it into a fully rendered linear 3D adventure. Fun fact, did you know that the game in production was codenamed the Sonic's Ass Game, as the player would be navigating stages and third person, literally meaning you'd be staring at Sonic's ass. It didn't bring anything particularly new to the table for platforming, but the game's presentation was lovingly stylized and appealing, and the level of detail in some areas was great. In that sense, it wasn't exactly a ginormous chocolate fondue like Mario 64, but instead, a small and refreshing little lump of chocolate mousse. Not setting the bar by any means, but still providing a relatively fresh experience. And I reckon that this could have left a hugely positive impression on a first time PlayStation player. Well, anyway, I'm starting to ramble now, and you guys want to hear about the game. So, to recite a famous quote from Gandhi, Let's get on with this shit. Now, obviously, I explained that I was two years old upon this game's release, meaning that by Crash 3's release date, that was actually the first instalment I played. Meaning that out of the original Naughty Dog Crash games, Crash 1 was actually the last one I played as a child. While I did enjoy the game in itself, and respecting the fact that it was the first in the series, it was still overshadowed by the superior sequels that I'd played first. And all I can recall from those years of childhood Crash 1 gaming is crying. Crying, screaming, kicking, shoving things up my bum because this game for me has left a constant scar in my mind for being one of the trickiest games I'd ever played as a kid. Before playing this I could get the majority of crystals, gems and relics from the other Crash games with a little bit of challenge but Crash 1 was easily the most difficult. In order to get a gem on a stage this involved having to beat the whole stage hitting all the boxes without dying once. Not not once, not once. And some levels have branching paths, hidden boxes, and really unforgiving platforming sections. Not only that, but the only way you can save the game is by collecting a gem or key, finding a after a bonus stage, or finishing an explosive Brio bonus stage. Nah, I'm just kidding. Brio stages give you absolutely fucking nothing, because that would make the game fair, wouldn't it? So, to reiterate, even just to save the bloody game, you either need to 
A, go through the entire stage without dying once and then hit all the boxes to get a gem, or B, find all the bonus tokens and then go through the bonus stage without dying once in that as well. Otherwise you'd lost your chance. You know, fuck, fuck this game! With that fact on your back, it makes some of the simplest stages seem close to impossible just over the constant pressure of not dying and fucking everything up! And another thing that I found is that sometimes the control isn't quite as tight as it could be. In the early stages, this isn't too much of a problem as you can just blast through any of them, but as you get to the later stages where you have to be patient in some areas, the jumping can sometimes get very sluggish and when you land and need to spin for whatever reason, Crash will immediately dart out of your control. And in really tight platforming sections where you don't actually have the space, in order to correct it, you can just fly off of the platforms at any given moment and lose a life. In order to beat this game 100%, you needed to be a goddamn master. And there's no real way of cheating with this as far as I can see, because if you enter the super code to beat the game 100% straight away, you can't save it, for all the bonus stages, gems and keys have already been obtained. And so I feel like I need to show you one of my greatest gaming accomplishments, because I have in fact beaten 100% Crash Bandicoot 1. It's on the screen right now, it doesn't have a date on it unfortunately, but that doesn't matter because I've actually beaten the game 100%. It was years ago, and I was a little boy. Look at that. It's Crash, there's his face. There's Crash, there's 100%, there's all the keys, there's all the gems, there's all the- look, see, select game to load, that is my memory card. So that is not a cheat, that is genuine, that is absolutely genuine. Oh god, many, many tears were shed, and many relatives were slaughtered, in order to get that. I must say, I, I was a ruthless son of a bitch, I was. I, I, I'm a glutton for game frustration, I love it. I love a bit of game frustration. In my eye. But anyways, even though my childhood memories of Crash 1 were mostly annoyances, after coming back to it a few years later, I decided that the challenge for older gamers is actually really fun in places. The hugely primitive control scheme, as in that you only use two action buttons and move around, contrasting to the tricky perspectives, jump segments and enemy placements, make this game quite engaging, until you begin dying and losing your progress. And the boss battles for what they are, are pretty fun and they're pretty memorable. The presentation as well is really great. Bright yet understated in jungles and swamps, and then dark yet eye-catching in temples and castles. It also coexists fantastically with the brilliantly bouncy and multi-genre soundtrack, creating a really great atmosphere in places such as the foggy bridge and the factory stages. And that was the one thing that I always admired Crash for, and that was the theming in each stage via colours and music. It seemed to seamlessly create any atmosphere it bloody wanted to, while still keeping light-hearted and swift at the same time. The environments are pretty vast and varied as well, and every different stage version of those environments are level designed pretty satisfyingly, give or take one or two frustrating shortcomings. Which all in all keeps you invested and saying no. to rage quitting and yes. to self-deprecation. <laughs> so, does Crash Bandicoot 1 hold up today? Well, to be honest, I reckon it pretty fucking does because this isn't a bad game at all. The graphics for its time are excellent, the level design is fun and challenging despite the frustration here and there, completing it fully is a real challenge, and more importantly, its simplistic nature makes it an essential pick up and play platformer. However, it didn't actually add anything new to the genre, and in some aspects it pales in comparison to the likes of Mario 64. And for today's audiences, unfortunately, the lack of forgiveness on saving the game may make it a little bit tricky to appeal. But for an early PlayStation exclusive, the fact that it stands out next to the continuously better sequels, and as well as marking the beginning legacy for an unexpected and obscure PlayStation mascot, Crash Bandicoot really does hold up. And the 6.8 million copies sold, and the prosperous future of Naughty Dog Games is all you need to see to truly respect it. Hello there my beautiful people, thank you for clicking on this video and thank you for enjoying it if you did. Please be sure to check out part 2 when I upload it, I'll probably stick a notification on this screen or something, but in the meantime, have a look at these other two videos. I'm giving you my last video and another Crash Bandicoot related game from a really outdated and pretty embarrassing review, so if you want to, go and have a look at those two and enjoy them both as well. And what's that I hear you cry? There's going to be another part? Yes, there is going to be another part, there's going to be three parts actually, because Caddy's Retrospectives covers the first three of any game franchise and so they're gonna be three-part videos for all you guys to enjoy so hopefully it will all be going well but until then stay tuned and stay beautiful